that may have everybody's attention now, look up here. Everybody look up here, unless uh, there is a blank, uh, then you can write in your notes. Okay. Uh, we, we started this study last week, and in our study last week, we, we said, it's in your notes, page 41, that the Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood person in, in the Trinity. Uh, he is also the most ignored part of the Christian's relationship with God. I'll give you another handout uh, before we dismiss. And this is for you to take home. Okay? This is for you to take home. Uh, it has one, I think, eight pages. Uh, you can, this is taken from the ABCs of Christian growth. And you can fill this home. You can learn more about who the, who the Holy Spirit is. Let me read the introduction here. In the introduction here it says, There is a whole lot of confusion about the Holy Spirit. So many people today are confused about the Holy Spirit and uh, what He does. Okay, especially Africa. Okay, especially Africa. Many cults deny that He is a person and that He is God. A cult is somebody who deviates from the teaching of the Word of God. Alibaba. Satis and Filipinas, they do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. That is deviation from the teaching of, of the Word of God. That's a good. They deny that, uh, that the Holy Spirit is a person. They do not believe that He is a person. They do not believe that He is God. What they say is that the Holy Spirit is just a force. Or He is simply, or the Holy Spirit is simply an influence. That's what others say. On the other hand, the charismatic movement, which is, uh, even in the Philippines, uh, we have a lot of them. On the charismatic movement, which has absolutely swept today's religious world, listen to this, places extreme emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Teaching such, as, such things as ecstatic utterances, you know, speaking in tongues. They say if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you will you will speak in tongues. That's what they say. Okay, ecstatic utterances, healings, and exorcism. So, with all these studies, our aim is to look beyond what men say. This is what we tried to do last week. We try to look beyond what men says and see. What the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Ang ginagawa natin dito is, hindi kung ano yung sinasabi ng mga tao, ang tinitignan natin, ano ang sinasabi, anong tinuturo ng Biblia, patungkol sa banal na Espiritu Santo. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, last week, uh, if you have your notes right now, we learned, um, the, the first part of the lesson was, who is the Holy Spirit? Page number 30, 42 in your handout. Just as a review. We learn that the Holy Spirit is is what? We learn that the Holy Spirit is come on everybody. If somebody will come to you now and, and will ask you, can you please teach me? Can you please uh, tell me who the Holy Spirit is? What will you say to them? Okay. Okay. So the first thing you say when somebody comes to you and say, can you please share something to me about the Holy Spirit? The first thing you say is that the Holy Spirit is one. Okay. The Holy Spirit is God. Okay. Uh, he is the third member of the Trinity. And if they ask you why do you say He is God? Because the Holy Spirit possesses the what? The attributes, particularly the non-moral attributes of God. For example, the Holy Spirit is Omniscient, the Holy Spirit is what else? Omnipresent, and the Holy Spirit is also called the what? The truth. And there's also that account in the book of Acts where the Bible says, Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. But the verse before that, the, uh, the Bible says that, Why hast thou lied unto the Holy Ghost? Verse 3 says, You lied unto the Holy Ghost. And then verse 4 says, you did not lie to men, you lied to God. And the conclusion we draw 
the conclusion is obviously the Holy Spirit is God. So the, that's the first thing you will say to somebody who would like to ask or who will ask you. So the Holy Spirit is what's number one? God. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is a person. Why? A person, what does a person, uh, what do we possess as a person? We have what? Intellect, and then we have emotions, and then we have, does the Holy Spirit, does he possess these things? What are some facts? What can you do to the Holy Spirit? You can grieve the Holy Spirit. What else? You can quench the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, what is the function of the Holy Spirit? Uh, three things about the Holy Spirit now. Uh, to make a conclusion, the Holy Spirit is what kind of a person is he? He's a definite person. Because of the what? Because of the how was he described? Paano describe yung Holy Spirit in the, in the book of John? Chapter 14 and 16. Yes, the word comforter was used, but what else? Pronoun. Know what I mean? The per personal pronouns used, such as what? He, he, he him, him, and himself. 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 Referring to the Holy Spirit, He shall abide with you. He. And uh, so those personal pronouns, he, him, and himself. So we learn from the Word of God that the Holy Spirit is a, what's number one? Is a definite person. Because of this personal pronouns. Secondly, we also learn that the Holy Spirit is a what? Divine. Divine person. That means he is, he is God. He is a definite person. He is a divine person. And that he is dynamic. A dynamic person. The word dynamic means what? Powerful. Powerful. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the other most part of the world. Okay? So, what is the function of the Holy Spirit now? To an unsaved person, to an unbeliever, what does the Holy Spirit do? He what? He convicts a sinner. And what does the Holy Spirit use to, to bring conviction upon the sinner? He uses the Word of God. There is no substitute for the Word of God. Okay? There is no substitute for the Word of God. And He also uses what? The what? The testimony of Christians. That's why dapat maingat tayo sa ating testimony. So, He convicts them and brings them to who? To the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we also learn that um, the responsibility or the function of the Holy Spirit in the believer is to what? Still let us say to conform okay, uh, the believer to Christ. Okay? And three ways the Holy Spirit does that is number one, He Comforts, second he convicts, and number three he communicates. He communicates to the believer, and he communicates for the believer. So I think those are very easy to understand, remember, very easy to remember. Let us see, the ultimate function of the Holy Spirit is to what? Exalt who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, now let's go to, uh, to part 2 of the lesson. Okay, we already did the review, as mentioned in the first paragraph of your handout, page 46. The third thing now about uh, the Holy Spirit is, when is the baptism, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or when? Okay. Now, many different baptisms in the scripture, maraming when you read the Bible and you read the word uh, baptize, the first thing that you need to do is ask yourself, what baptism is he talking about? Okay, anong baptism ang pinag-uusapan dito? Because there are several kinds of baptism in the Bible. For example, number one, you have the baptism of you have the baptism of sino yung nagbaptize sa Jordan River? You have the baptism of John for repentance. Okay? Pray that. 
the baptism of John for repentance. You write that in your notes. Okay. On the right part is the baptism of Moses. You see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Maybe some other times we will be talking about baptism and discuss all these different kinds of baptism here. And there is also the baptism of Jesus. So you have the baptism of John for repentance. You have the baptism of Moses. And then you have the baptism of Jesus. And then you also have the baptism of fire. Okay. Is there anyone here who wants to be baptized with fire? <laughs> when we baptize with water, what do we do? We take you to our water and we what? Submerge. We submerge or we dip you in that water. Is there anyone here who wants to be baptized with fire? Okay. The Bible talks about baptism of fire and there are three views view regarding the baptism of fire. Uh, one is eternal torment, second is talking about trials and sufferings. And third, it's talking about conviction uh, of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you have the baptism of John for repentance. You have the baptism of Moses. You have the baptism of Jesus. You have the baptism of fire. You have the baptism of the believer. That is water. Okay, but there is also the baptism of the cross actually. And then you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what we are talking about here. Now, let it be. Baptism means to what? To immerse. Or to what's the letter I? To identify or identification. So when you read of the word baptism, you immediately think of the word what? I just gave you the word. Identification. Or to be identified with. Okay. Now Paul identified with Christ in Galatians 2.20. He said, I am crucified with. Okay. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, uh, when we talk about question, okay, when we talk about baptism, is there only one baptism in the Bible, yes or no? Is there only one kind of baptism? No. no. Yes or no? no? There are different kinds. You have the baptism of fire, you have all those, the baptism of John through repentance, you have the baptism of Jesus, and then you have the baptism of the believer, that's water, and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, Baptism means to what was the word? To immerse. To identify. Stay with the lesson. Okay, we will come to the immerse thing later on. It means to identify. Yes, to immerse or to identify or identification. Turn to the next page now. Verse number 47. Uh, letter C. Okay, so one we learned this afternoon that there are different kinds of <laughs> Baptism. So when you are reading a passage of the scripture, ask yourself, is this talking about, what kind of baptism is this talking about? Is this talking about water? Is this talking about fire? Is this talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? That's number one. And number two, we read what baptism is. It is, baptism means to be what? Emerged or it means to be identified. Let us see. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is our, what is the blank? Is our, starts with letter S, salvation. This is designed for salvation. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is our salvation. Romans chapter 6, 3 and 4. Know you not that so many of us, as were baptized, you see the word identify? That means we were baptized, that means we were identified unto Jesus Christ were baptized or were identified unto his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism that is by identification unto death that's why when we baptize somebody we put them under water okay that's why you cannot you cannot baptize somebody by simply what by simply pouring on somebody's head 
There are three ways people would baptize. One is by sprinkling. And the other is by pouring water in the head. That's not baptism. The Greek word for that is rantizo. The word used in the Bible is baptizo. Which means to dip. Okay? Which means to immerse. Okay? So, we are buried with Him by baptism. That's why if you are baptized by sprinkling, or if you are baptized by pouring, that is not a scriptural baptism. You are never baptized. That is not the Bible way of baptizing. Okay? And if you were baptized as an infant, some of you say, I don't need to be baptized. I was baptized when I was young. That is not acceptable. There is no baptism of infants in the Bible. Amen. The Bible tells us very clearly, and they that gladly received His word, that means you understood it. Okay? You heard it. You understood it. They that gladly received His word were what? Baptized. baptized. That's why we do not baptize infants. That is not the scriptural. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism. That means identification to His death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Okay? So we baptize, we put somebody under water and then we bring them up. Because it is a picture of your death and then burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, your water has no cleansing effect. It has no cleansing power. Okay, when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your sins are forgiven. Not when you are baptized. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, another very important thing. You follow me? This is you. Let's say this is Andre. You think you were saved before. Probably you went to church. Probably you were baptized before. But when you came to Qatar and you came to BBC, now you understood what salvation is. And you open your heart and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Your baptism before does not come. Because baptism follows salvation. You cannot be baptized and then get saved. If you were baptized before because you thought you were saved, but you were not really saved, and then you came here, and then you were enlightened, you understood what it means to be saved, you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then you must be baptized. Amen. Okay? Because they that gladly received His word were what? Baptized. baptized. And then they were added to the church. So those are two things that are required if you will be a member of the church. First, you need to be saved. Second, you need to be baptized. And then you, uh, you become a part of the church. Another thing about baptism. Again, baptism means what? Identification. Identity or identification. So if you are baptized with whatever church na pinanggalingan nyo, okay, you came from the church, and you are baptized in the church, that means you are identified with the church. For example, in the church, you have women preachers. And I will not debate with you, but it is very clear from the Word of God that women should not assert authority over the men. We believe from the Word of God, uh, without twisting the Word of God, that uh, the office of the pastor is an office given to men only. Okay? So, if you, are, if you are baptized in the church, then you are identified with the church. Okay? If you are identified with a church, for example, that uses different kinds of books, I don't call it Bibles, okay, where the blood of Jesus Christ is, is omitted, where the doctrine of the Trinity is omitted, where hell is also removed from their books, then you are identified with the, the church. That's why it's very important to be baptized and be identified with the church uh, that is loyal to the teaching of the Word of God. Amen. There are no perfect churches. We are not a perfect church here. But we are trying our very best to be faithful and to be loyal to the Word of God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, just some thoughts about baptism. Now, the question is not how much the Holy Spirit you have. Okay? It's not you having the Holy Spirit, but how much He has of you. Okay? It's not how much do we have of the Holy Spirit. The question is how much does the Holy Spirit, uh, how, uh, how much... He has of you. Now, 
baptism of the Holy Spirit occur say again baptism means identification identification or identity always remember that word so you got you were baptized of the Holy Spirit okay when you what when you got saved that was the time when you were baptized with the, with the Holy Ghost so when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior that means you are already baptized of the Holy Ghost to me that is October 8 of 1976 I got baptized in water October 11 of 1976 several days after I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior so that is number three one is we learn that there are different kinds of baptism and we can come to that study later when we discuss this uh, subject of baptism number two we learn what baptism is baptism means what three letter eyes one could be what immerse okay the second it could be it could mean identity or number three it could be identification i'm trying to make this as elementary as possible so at least uh, we will understand what uh, what is being taught here so we were baptized of the holy ghost when the moment we got saved nung tinanggap mo ang panginoong iso kristo as your personal savior that means you were baptized of the holy ghost because right then and on you're already identified with the lord jesus christ okay you accepted him as your personal savior number four roman numeral number four how am i filled by the holy spirit the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 18, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is exists, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not talking about not being, not getting drunk. Okay? It's not talking about drinking too much wine. When you drink too much wine, what happens to you? Uh, you get drunk and then you begin to act what? crazy like okay i will not name names see it's no longer you it's already the influence of alcohol alcohol or liquor you are acting what uh, yes you are acting very differently okay you you say things you should not say uh, you can immediately tell when a person is done you can tell that they are drunk by their smell. By their smell. You can tell they are drunk by their looks. You can tell that they are drunk by the way they walk. They walk. It is very obvious. Oh, he is drunk. Okay. The way they talk, you can tell very clearly that they are drunk. Now, uh, the same is true when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. No person can be drunk and, and not, uh, not in the room recognize. When a person is drunk, you can immediately, you can immediately spot, oh, he is drunk. You come near the person, you smell him. He walks, and he walks like that. One step forward, and then he takes You understand? That means you can tell very easily that they are drunk. The way they talk, okay? and then the way they... When someone is saying, you know, Maya, uh, I have been thinking about this, but uh, I'm, I'm always, uh, but I want to tell you that uh, <laughs> Maya can easily say, someone? Who is Maya? The point is, when a person is drunk, you can easily identify them. The same is true when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, you can very easily tell that the person is Spirit-filled. Amen. By the way they talk. Okay. If a person is singing rap music, ah, oh, he's Spirit-filled. Eh? <laughs> uh, that's not being Spirit-filled. Feeling has to do with what? Control. Write the word control. Feeling has to do with control. You cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit until He controls every 
area of your life. So when we talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit, it's not what the charismatic are doing, that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you begin to... to what do you call that? That's not the only that's not the spirit of God. That's the spirit of the dog and the spirit of the cow. No class in the Holy Spirit, then the Pagnapuno and the Holy Spirit, Gumu Gurum Gurum Ganadan. That's not the spirit of God. Amen. If to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God is simply wrong, let's just go ahead and roll. Go ahead, everybody do it. That's not the Holy Spirit. When we talk about feeling of the Holy Spirit, it's not talking about a rolling on the floor, it's not even talking like uh, uttering words that nobody understands. It's not talking about that. When we talk about the feeling of the Holy Spirit, that means the Holy Spirit has absolute control of your life. Amen. Let there be. The normal Christian life is to be filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. It's to be spirit filled. It's, it's normal. For the Christian to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So if we are not filled with the Holy Spirit, that means there is something wrong. There is something wrong. Let us see. How do you know if you are filled with the Holy Spirit? Write the word no. Okay, it's like, here is a cup. Okay. If we put, you know what is this? What is, what is inside this bottle? Okay. And put this inside this, uh, let's say, cup. And then you shake this cup. What, what comes out? Water. Water. That's my lunch. Okay. Now, what is coming out when you are shaken? Like a glass. It has the illustration here, the cup illustration. What comes out? Right, the blank. The works of the flesh or the works of the spirit. Kaya dito mo nakikita kung isang tao, if a, if a person is spirit-filled, ano lumalabas ang mabuhay nila? Let's make this very, ito, this is obvious. When you see a person, his life is shaken, what, what comes out of his life? Ano yung mga, what are the fruit of the Holy Spirit? The, the fruit of the spirit is what? How many? Ilan yun? Ilan yun? Ako ni Salangin, di ba? But the fruit, not fruits. The fruit of the Spirit. Singular. Pero, nine ang nababangit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, what else? Joy, peace, long-suffering, tenderness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance is one of them. Those nine things. So when you are Spirit-filled, Ito yung mga lumalabas sa buhay mo. Especially when you have problems. Okay? You are a loving person. Because you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Umaapaw sa buhay mo ito. So, there is love. So, kung palagi kang galit, if you are always mad, if you are always angry with somebody, do you think your spirit filled? There is something very wrong if, uh, if you are always mad. Okay? Another, another in the list is, the fruit of the Spirit is love. What else? Joy. Okay. Do we have problems in life? Yes. What, what do you do? Okay. When people see your face, when you have problems, what do they see? Do they say, do they see joy or do they see a gloomy face? Pero mga problema, hindi ka na makausap, no? Wala ka. Who are you? Pati sa chest, wala ka na rin. Huh? May problema lang kasi. Well, is that the fruit of the Spirit? You have problems, so you stay home? No. That's not being Spirit-filled. Okay? When you are Spirit-filled, again, do, do, when we say Spirit-filled, that means we are what? Let us see. We are? Control. We are controlled by the Holy Spirit. That, what, that is exactly what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every area of our life is under the control of the Holy Spirit. So, because of that, you are filled with the Spirit of God. There is love, there is joy, there is peace. You have so much problem, but you know, you still have peace. Okay? You don't worry so much about what's going on. And all those things, goodness. The works of the flesh, on the other hand, is what? Anger, 
jealousy, bitterness, revenge, and let, let us look at the uh, as we close, tingnan natin yung Galatians. Buksan nyo na lang na, Galatians. Galatians, and then I will give you your handout for your personal study. Galatians chapter 5, 16 to 25. Look at this. This I say then, Paul is talking to the believers in Galatia. He said, this I say then, ito sinasabi ko sa inyo, walk in the spirit. And he shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. That means if you are being controlled by the Holy Spirit, you will not do the, the things of the flesh. And these are contrary, the one, sorry, for the flesh, last step against the Spirit. That means the, the flesh doesn't want you to do what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. And the Spirit last step against the flesh. That means they cannot agree. One wants you to do this, the other wants you to do another thing. The flesh wants you to stay home and sleep and rest because you will have work tomorrow. The Holy Spirit says, no, it's all right. You just go to church. I'll give you the strength you need. Okay? The flesh says, don't give. You need money for yourself. You need money for your family. Don't give because if you give, you lose your money. The Holy Spirit says, no, just give and the Lord will take care of your needs. See, they are contrary. And these are contrary, the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Hindi natin nagagawa yung mga bagay na gusto natin gawin. Why? Because may kung ipigil. You want to do good, the flesh will, will hold you back. Verse 18. But if ye be led, what does that mean? If ye are controlled. What does that mean? If ye are filled of the Spirit, capital letter S, ye are not under the law. Okay? Now the works of the flesh are manifest. What are they? The works of the flesh, which are these. What is number one in the list? Say the word. Adultery. Okay. Adultery is, what kind of sin is this? You are married and you are having an affair with another person. That is adultery. Fornication. Adultery is sex outside of marriage. Fornication is sex before marriage. If you are not married, okay, uh, do not, you should not be involved in sex. That is something that God reserved for, not even for a man and wife. Sex, sexual intercourse, is not between a man and a woman. Did you listen? Amen. It's not between a man and a woman. Sexual intercourse is between a husband and wife. Okay, for anybody to have a sexual relationship before marriage is fornication and the Lord will judge you for that. Okay, there is a judgment that awaits you for, for that. Okay, adultery, fornication, you know, gustum gustum gawin na ating flesh. Our flesh enjoys having adultery or fornication or uncleanness. Or, what's another sin? Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is going beyond what the limit. Okay? That's why when you touch a woman in certain parts of her body, you can be charged with acts of lasciviousness. Because when you shake hands with a woman, let's say, there is a welcome here, and you shake hands, can they charge you? No. Why? Because that is within the limit. You can shake somebody's hand. Okay. But if you if you have a different way of shaking hands, maybe you touch their breast or something, you are going beyond the limit. Okay? So that is uh, lasciviousness. The Bible says, what else? Idolatry. Idolatry is worship of idols, which can be your phone. Okay? And playing so much uh, games in your phone. And then, uh, uh, you have no more time for the word because uh, of your phone. Yeah. Thank you, Don Sa Bagun Fona. I did I really plan because my phone is yung ang yung phone ko kasi pag nag message sa kung ganon at isend ko sa yon. I ikot ikot lang yun di magsend yan. So I send mo siya and then I off mo. I on mo ulit at punta ka sa outbox at isend mo magsend na. So you go through that process before you can send a message. 
So if I send you a message, that means pinag-irapan ko yan. I type the message, I send it, and then I uh, e off, save, and then e off, and then turn it on, and then go to the outbox, send the message, and then it will send. Uh, so I decided to buy a new one. Pero I planned it na mabayaran mo ng 6 months or 1 year. But for some reason, uh, somebody had the initiative to just... So thank you. Thank you for that. Hindi ko na po binayaran yun. Uh, so thank you. But I don't agree. Bakit tayo napunta doon? Gadgets. Witchcraft. Yan. Witchcraft. Who's practicing witchcraft here? Is there anybody here who is practicing witchcraft? Many. The Bible says, stubbornness is as the sin of... Is there anybody here who is stubborn? <laughs> Am I the only one? We are stubborn at times. The Bible says in 1 Samuel that stubbornness is as the sin of witchcraft. Hatred. Madali tayong magalit. And when you are mad, pati Facebook, pinupost nyo yung mga galit nyo. Don't do that. Huwag nyo gagawin nyo. Amen. Marians. Ah, mga grupo-grupo. Emulations. Wrath. What is wrath? Okay. Poor. Okay. And strife and seditions and heresies. Invayings. Uh, murders. Drunkenness. Rebellings. And such like. Iba pang mga katulad niya. Okay. On the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Because if you keep doing those things, probably you are not really saved. Yeah. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kind of problem, uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The Bible says, again, such there is no law. Those are the things that comes out of our life when we are filled or when we are what? Controlled by the Holy Spirit. So the question is, is your life controlled by the Holy Spirit of God? Now, I have another, I, I'll give you this. Because we can always make uh, more copies. Please use this. We we this is one real, more than one real percent. Okay. I want you to study this. You put the lesson comments. That means when did you start the lesson? Sabutin nyo jan. Lesson check. And then sabutin nyo ito. And then next week we will come back and uh, you will check the paper of your seat mate. Okay. So you check natin ito next week. Okay. If you are not going to do this, please don't get a copy. Uh, so this is another copy, different from the one I gave you earlier, okay? Let's distribute faster, para mas mabilis tayo. We have to dismiss now, okay? So, in this notes, again, you will learn who the Holy Spirit is. Number two, what has the Holy Spirit done in times past, since the time of the creation? Number three, what is the work of the Holy Spirit today? Number four, what does the Holy Spirit do when we are saved? Number five, what is the relationship between the Holy Spirit and me? Okay. And then, page number 59, very interesting. Our African brothers, listen to this. What about the speaking in tongues and divine healers? Okay. That's page 59. And also page number 60. So you have two pages for speaking in tongues and uh, divine healing. I don't want to keep you long because it's warm. Pagdating ng mga November, December, mas okay na ito. Amen? Did you learn something today? Amen. I hope you did. I just tried my best. I, uh, so I, I, I just trust that you learned something from the Word of God. And now you know the Holy Spirit better because of what you, of what you learned. Okay, anybody who did not receive a copy? Pakitaas ko ng damay. Okay. If you are a Bible student, yung umahate ng afternoon, can you please give your copy? I make 150 copies. That means, who, who else doesn't have a copy? Meron ako pera. Sino mo lang copy? Pakitaas ko ng damay. Kung pwede yun ibigay doon sa likod, and then, uh, papakawa ko na na pero. Ganito, ganito. Kung a-attend kayo sa Tuesday, ibigay nyo na muna yung copy nyo. 
kasi sa Marquez, bibigyan ko ngayon. Okay? I'll give you a copy on Tuesday so you can give your copy to somebody.